tonight. Only two of this week's acts can go into the finals. people talk about stuff like that then check out the recap room podcast link in description Simon gosh Petri I'm I'm actually kind of speechless right now um, look you know what what I was thinking was first of all how what a beautiful voice you've got what a beautiful version Honestly, Putri, this is why I still do this job for moments like this, genuinely. Because that was so beautiful, and I do want to thank um, uh, you two because, you know, they don't clear their songs because... I understand this, a lot of uh, our, our bands don't clear their songs, but they cleared this song for Putri to sing because they saw her audition. And they knew how much this would mean to her. And I cannot thank you enough because I think you've just hopefully changed this girl's life. Thank you so much. Sophia. I don't think I've ever heard something more beautiful in my life. Thank you so much. That was spectacular. Every note, the feeling, what you were like, I mean, making us feel, it was amazing. One of my favorite songs of all time. I think this was the perfect, perfect, perfect act. Heidi. You sounded so beautiful. And I thought to myself, this is probably what it sounds like when an angel is singing. Literally. So beautiful. And I do hope, I do hope that 
Bono gets to hear this, and I wish you all the luck. I mean, you have a stunning, stunning, stunning voice. Thank you so much. Great comment, Howie. Perfection! Thank you so much. Putri, what do you want to say to Simon and the rest of America? I would like to say thank you so much, Simon, and all the people who supported me. You already changed my life beautifully, and please vote for me. Thank you so much. Good luck tonight, Putri. Oh, yeah. Let's go. I know this is a family show, but people just love watching a man fiddle with himself. <laughs> and the thing is that it was such a... Why, what, what, Simon? What are you, why are you putting the, your eye on the mic? What's wrong with you today? I don't know. <laughs> just having fun. I loved it. Hopefully America loves it and votes for you. Thank you so much. Heidi! I love you too. I mean, you play great, but it's the energy that you give. You have something special about you because you give more than 100%. You really do. Good luck to you today. It means the world to me. Thank you. Sophia. Philip, you are a great entertainer. Great energy. Thank you. You make the violin sexy. Hey. What a, what a show tonight. I loved it. Thank you so much. Simon. It is every parent's nightmare when the child says, I want to play the violin. Seriously. <laughs> And actually, you made it entertaining. <laughs> it was a really good choice of song. You are such a great personality. And you know what? I can feel how much this means to you. Yes. Yes. And I think the, the audience at home are going to really like you. Thank you so much, Simon. And you look great. Now, Philip, you are up here breaking strings and everything. Look, how much does this mean to you right now? It means everything to me. I'm down 50 pounds since the last time I was here. <laughs> Cora Stella Henry, this is for you. Dad loves you. Can you hear me calling out your name? You know that I'm falling and I don't know what to say. I speak a little louder and live and shout You know that I'm proud and I can't get the words out Oh, I Say 
Mzanzi Youth Choir. Heidi. I mean, this was giving me all sorts of really good vibes coming from all of you. It felt really, really good. It was a great song choice. You know, your harmonizing together was beautiful. I love the way everyone looks. Every time you really bring it with your beautiful outfits, your makeup and everything. It just gave me a really good feeling when you were singing. Thank you so much. Sophia. I think we all got goosebumps. That was so beautiful. It's like a feel good moment. You guys make me smile. It was like, like listening to a soundtrack of like a movie. <laughs> Thank you it so was much. spectacular. Thank you for being here. Simon. I think this act is spectacular. Your energy and just the way you perform, it just draws you in. And you know, we always say this, sh this stage could make you or break you and tonight it made you. And, uh, thank you once again for that beautiful, beautiful tribute you did before for Nightbird and her family, or part of her family, are here tonight. And thank you for being here. Her family's here tonight. Howie! You know, I want to say, whether you're singing the words and the melody of Nightbird or you're doing Fleetwood Mac, you always bring your beauty, your culture, your look, and your essence to the stage. And it doesn't, you make it so unique, so original, so magnetic. I, I don't usually love choirs, I love you. And I, that's my three words for you. I love you. We love you. Now, M. Zanzi, you went through a lot to get here. You had flight cancellations and other issues. How does it feel to get here and get the love from America that you're getting right now? We have the biggest family in America, and we're so happy to be performing for you. In the morning, I still get a little bit nervous. Fighting my anxiety constantly, I try to control it Don't know if you'll get it, cause I can't express how thankful I am That you're always with me when it hurts, I know that you don't understand I don't wanna lose I still think it's coming, but I know it's not oh, Trying to breathe in and then out, but the air gets scarred Even though I'm older now and I know how to shake off the past I wouldn't have made it if I didn't have you holding my
beautiful. You know what I love about you is your personality. Yes. I really, really wish that tonight America votes for you. It's a very hard competition tonight. Yeah. Only two yeah. are going to go to the finals, and I really, really hope that one of them is you. Oh, thank you so much. Simon. Summer, I remember your audition like it was yesterday. I thought it was brilliant. And what I liked about you, like Sophia said, I loved your personality. Uh, there was a kind of a rawness to your audition, which I think we lost tonight. Everything, to me, felt a little bit overproduced, which is a shame. Because <laughs> what is your problem? I just feel, I don't know. It's You're the that. Grinch tonight. No, I'm not being the Grinch, because I really like her. And I, I, I like the song, I didn't love the song, but I really, really like you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Howie, your thoughts? My thoughts are, you're beautiful. Um, you have an incredible stage presence, as they were saying, personality. You know, and, and, and again, to just echo what they're saying, only two can go through. And sometimes when you're just singing, there's a lot of places to sing, you gotta blow the roof off the place. I thought you did a great job. Wasn't my favorite song. Not up to me, it's up to America. I think you did as good as you possibly could. Thanks. Heidi, you on your feet. I like what you did. I think this is a really, really big song, and you're such a young, delicate little girl, still a young lady, and I feel like you really nailed it. So don't listen to all this negativity. Thank you, Heidi. You've done really, really well, but you should be proud. Thank you. Summer, how do you feel about the judges being a little split about this performance? It's totally understandable. Everyone has their own opinions on things, and I'm just taking in what they're saying as advice and tips for the next performance if I make it through. Oh, that's a smart move. Hey! 
it's beautiful, it's scary, it's original. One of my favorite acts of all time on this show is V Unbeatable, and you hit that same mark. I love this, I love you. America's got a vote, and the two acts going through. Heidi! First of all, I think you have to check my pulse because I don't know if I'm still, uh, is it still, is it still? Uh, uh, through her, still, through I'm, her wrist. I mean, I was yeah. so on the, on the edge of my seat, especially when the youngest man was like flying through the air. I mean, you guys are insane what you do. It's <laughs> unbelievable. each other and you build like this formation. It is absolutely incredible. I know the show just started, but this is definitely a highlight of tonight. <laughs> Sophia! Definitely, what a way to open the show tonight because this was mesmerizing. I loved you guys during the auditions, but tonight was spectacular. Absolutely. The Russian swing, the outfits, the music, everything you guys did shows what AGT is all about. Congratulations. Yeah. Simon, are you not entertained? Well, I, I mean, everything, Terry. So when did you fly in? When did you fly in? Just a minute ago, from over there to the other side. <laughs> you know about flying. <laughs> when, when did you get here? When did you get here in America? Uh, last week. Okay. Okay, so you haven't had a lot of time to prepare for something which is everything, it's like a watch. Yeah. You know, every single part had to work. I agree with Sophia. This is an act we loved, loved, loved. <laughs> However, we love it. Good luck tonight, everybody. Don't ask me what you know is true. Don't have to tell you Just hide.
I gotta say that he makes, he makes running with scissors seem like a great idea. Um, it's just, you know, it's like you took the exact opposite of what Barry just did before you, who told one story. You did silks, you did sword swallowing, you did hand balancing, you did it all. You deserve to be in the finals. I hope America votes for you. Simon. Uh, we ask people to bring their A game at this point in the show. Terry, no question, he did. Uh, but the, I, I kept laughing because I kept thinking if Borat was a sword swallower, that's what he would do. I couldn't get this image out of my mind, but that's a good thing. <laughs> Sophia. I mean, I'm like speechless. That was like breathtaking. You so handsome, so talented. It was like a combination of so many things and you did them all well. I think you're ready for any show you want to do. It was funny, it was sexy, it was dangerous, spectacular. You know that's not speechless, right? I love you. You are my favorite act of tonight. Couture. I love also that you're making all of your costumes yourself. I even saw that your sword is bedazzled. I mean, you really think about everything. I love you. I love this act. Congratulations. There, Juan. Where did you get the idea to do all these things with swords? I'm an artist. I'm very, very creative. I did all this act only for the live show, and I have a lot of idea for the final. Oh. Technology. Why? Because it has the potential to bring us closer together. Let me show you what I mean. Hi, Heidi. In front Hello. of you is some paper. And here, let me grab you a pen. Yes. Heidi, I would like you, I would like you to think of a single moment. A moment in which you felt a strong connection to someone special. Okay. For example, I might think of when I went sailing with my dad. Cute. Do you have a moment in mind? Of course. Okay. I'm, I'm I would like you to take this pen okay. and make a quick drawing of that moment you're thinking of. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be fancy, nothing, uh, no stick figures are fine, but when you're done, autograph it for me so that we know that it's yours. Okay. All right. Now, I am on the biggest stage in the world, the AGT <laughs> live shows. And I love, I love that thanks to technology, I get to share the biggest moment of my life with my best friend, Kyle, on video call. Kyle, are you there? What's up, Trig? I can't believe we're on live TV! Yes! <laughs> we're doing it! We made it, brother! We did it! Kyle, meet everybody. Everybody, meet Kyle. Hello, everyone. Hi, Heidi. How's your drawing coming? What is happening? You. How's your drawing coming? Uh, very good. Uh, should I be good? finished? Keep going, okay, but don't okay. forget to sign it because Kyle wants an autograph. <laughs> Kyle's very excited because, honestly, we've dreamed of performing together on stage like this ever since we were teenage magicians. It's true, I have proof. Check it out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we were really cool. Really cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Heidi, are you done with your drawing? I am. Oh, I can't wait to see what you've done for us. Let's take a look. Oh, this is brilliant, okay. Fantastic, you... take a look everyone, check this out. Can you... No wedding. Uh -huh. yes. I... Now I think I know what's going on here, Heidi, but could you tell us, share with us the moment you've drawn? Well, it's my wedding. Of course, incredible. <laughs> Why is it so funny? Oh, it's incredibly special. I mean, okay, these good. are the moments we live for, yes. Heidi, right? These moments of connection, sharing them with people we care about. And Heidi, I would like to connect you 
with Kyle by sharing your special moment Hi, Kyle. with him despite the distance. Okay. Kyle, here you go. Oh, you want me to take it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, Hi, okay. there it is. There's your drawing, right there, with your autograph, you and your husband on your wedding day. Thank you so much. That's you know, I've good, always huh? wanted supermodel art. <laughs> I'm gonna hang this on my wall. That's pretty Let's good. See, right there we uh, go. That looks good. Did it? Yeah. Oh. Uh. What happened? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Did, we, did we lose? Uh oh. Uh, we're well, live. We lost Kyle. Uh, you know, I guess I can appear like that on stage, but I can't fix Wi-Fi. <laughs> this is live. But I don't need to, because I want to remember this moment between all of us, just like she remembers her wedding day. Right, Heidi? Well, yeah. Fortunately, this is not a video call. It never has been. It's a memory. A poster. Of a moment what? I will never forget. Heidi! Yes! Well, I, I bet we can all admit that I was the best part of this act. Oh, of but you also oh. were pretty good. I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm like, how did he do that? That was pretty special. Thank right? you very much. Yes. Yeah. Sophia, what did you think? That was something, again, that I've never seen before on this stage. So I have to give it to you. I mean, you took the challenge of making it work live, and it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Simon. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I said to Sophia, I have no idea what's going on here, which <laughs> probably is a good thing. I think your presentation is a bit annoying. I'm not going to lie. However... <laughs> however, it was clever. We don't know how you how that happens, so good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Howie. Wow. Good for you. You're annoying. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that. Except that I gotta say that I don't know if it's annoying as much as there was kind of a dip. You're my favorite magician this season. And I gotta say, and magic is your entrance was spectacular yes. and jaw-dropping. Your closing was spectacular and jaw-dropping. I think what Simon had, in the middle, it got a little boring, but it was fantastic. I'm glad you're here. Only two can go through. It's up to America, not us. Now, Trig, when did you decide to combine your tech skills with your magic? You know, it was really just experiencing how magical the modern world is and wanting to remind people of that, to, to remind them to dream. That's right, that's right, Trig. Yo, these four new jacks is real smooth on the hungry tip. Nick Mike Shine and Wong, you know the attack.
Because they have a purpose. It's not an act who just wants to get a few more views on TikTok or whatever. It I really love their idea. Yes. I really yeah. do. And also, I think from the, when we first saw this act to now, they have gone up huge leaps. And by the way, it wasn't perfect and it shouldn't be perfect. It was just fun. I love this act. Yeah, thank you. Howie, come on, man. Why did you bust it? Okay, him? I'm gonna be totally honest. I agree with you, Simon. This is just fun. And he said, as he said in the video piece, what a great idea for a franchise. Instead of Mummy and Me classes, this parent jam, they should be all over the nation. It shouldn't be a million dollar show in Vegas. It's nothing anybody's gonna buy tickets to for a concert, but I would take my kids to it. Because in the song it's push it, push it real good, and that's when you did it. <laughs> it was no, it was endearing to watch. It's beautiful to watch. You know the families dance together. Thank you, Heidi. I mean, most of the time, children are embarrassed to do anything. You with would their buy parents. tickets to see this. Well, I would want to do this. I would want to do this You'd also. You want to do it? And I You'd think go... it's inspiring for families to do this together, and I think they're onto something. Yes, thank yes. you, yes. Sophia. Well, it was the feel good act of the night, definitely. I think you guys did a great job on what you did. I don't know if you can compete with the talent that we have See? here tonight. See? But whatever you do, you are doing it the right way. It's up to America. It's I not up to me. Howie. It's All not by up to Exactly. It's up to America. America. Now, wait. Feel right. Listen, first of all, since you got buzzed by Howie, what do you want to say to America to get them to vote for you? You know, I understand the, the whole concept of performing in Vegas, I get that, but right now, we're really breaking down barriers right now. Yeah. You know? We really are. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good luck, everybody. Hold on to me. Don't let me go. You can't wait to see me. You can't wait to go. so simple. That's what I love, but I know what it takes. This was amazing. Good job tonight. Thank I think you. America are going to love what you do because when you're there, you seem like you're enjoying yourself so much. I can tell how much this means to you, and I love you. Thank you so much. Simon. Um, no, I'm not going to lie. I don't find tap dancing very interesting. However, 
You are very talented. And I thought... And it's hard to compete with the kind of acts you're competing with tonight, you know, but in terms of how good you are, you did a brilliant job, I've got to tell you. Thank you. My legs feel like jello. Oh. <laughs> Howie. Well, you know, I agree with what Simon is saying. I'm saying nobody was more aware than you of what you were up against, and that's why you added the jump rope, and you added the confetti, and you danced on point. <laughs> I'm, you know, I love tap dance. I love, I think that's classic. From my era, I used to like to watch Sammy Davis Jr. And I told you about the, the, you know, I watched everybody that tap dance. I love it. You're great at it. Is it enough to get one of the two spots? That's not up to us. Good luck, buddy. Heidi. Well, I love you and I love you tap dancing and I like this. I might have loved it just a teeny little bit more last time just because it was more of a surprise. You tap dancing to the hip hop. So that was for me, so a little bit more twisted. So I liked it a little tiny little bit more last time. Oh. That's okay. That's now, Justin, how do you think your performance went tonight? For me, it felt so good from the top of my head to the tip of my shoes. It felt nice. This group, Terry, and I love this idea. I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. And the chemistry, the fun, originality. Look, again, you know, it's very difficult with these instruments to be absolutely note perfect, but it doesn't matter. It was just different. Like I said, I love this act. I love this, love this performance. Howie. Uh, they performed their brasses off. You know, here's what I think. I absolutely love what I'm seeing, but it feels like it should be the brass section of a bigger act. You know, if I went to see somebody... Oh, my God. I think 
you can't hear what they're saying, but everybody seems to agree with me. Heidi. First of all, arigato, okay, arigato for being here again. And doing you. this amazing act, I think it is amazing because you know you play and then you have this choreography. I mean, normally musicians, they kind of are standing in the back and you kind of don't pay attention, but you girls are all dancing and performing at the same time while you're playing. And let's talk about these outfits. Yes. Sophia. Adorable, fun. You guys look like you're having the best time. It's something that is very difficult to play those instruments, to move around the stage, and you did it with Grace, and you did it, you know, loving it, and it was a great show. Yeah. Thank you. Most, how are you feeling? I'm so happy to pop a mess here. Thank you so much. We love America. Thank you. We live. What's up? I'm so glad to be here, man, with you all, man. What's up, America? What's up, everybody? Yeah. I got my family in the house. My wife is here. My kid is here. It's so great being married, man. People don't talk about the positives of marriage. Marriage go good sometimes. You always hear people like, it's always, no, it goes good. I remember one day me and my wife, it's a true story. We was having a great day. You ever having a great day with your mate? Everything's going well. You know what I mean? You looking at them, they looking at you like, I'm so glad I picked you. <laughs> and you looking back like, I'm glad I picked you too. <laughs> You're so silly. <laughs> we just have one of those days, she's acting silly. She's like, let me ask you a question. I was like, okay, she's like, let me ask you a question. Listen, okay, I'm like, are we playing? She's like, you could be any animal you want, okay? If you could be any animal you want, what animal would you be? I was like, mm. and she's like, wait, I'd be a lioness. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's sexy, okay, lioness. She's like, what animal would you be? You could be any animal you want. So I'm thinking, you know, because I, I really wanted to take, when you say, what animal would I be? I want to make sure the animal represent me. So I started thinking of different animals. I haven't watched the Animal Channel in a while. So I was thinking, I was thinking about the bear. Ah, he aggressive, but I don't want no gut. So I was like, yeah, no, not the bear. I was thinking of the deer. You know, I see the deer on the picture. I was like, no, that don't really, that ain't really me. And I thought of an eagle. An eagle, it's something regal about an eagle. I said, I would be an eagle, babe. She said, you'll be a what? <laughs> so I'd be an eagle. She said, what did I say I'd be? <laughs> you said you'd be a lioness. And she said, and what you say? I said, I would be an eagle. And you don't see nothing wrong with that. Baby, you said whatever I want to be. So that, do that mean you want to fly away from this relationship? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> huh? Babe, what you talking about? No, you, are you saying you don't want to be with me? Is that what you're saying? I'm like, babe, what are you talking about? She's like, how are we going to be together? I'm like, babe, calm down. I, we were just having a great time. What happened? Hold on. <laughs> you said whatever I want to be. I didn't know we was together in this animal kingdom. I didn't know that. I didn't know that's what it was. She's like, how you not know that? I'm like, I didn't know. She's like, we together. I was like, I didn't know in the animal world, but okay, my bad. I'm trying to reel it back in. I'm like, my bad, I'm a lion. She's like, no, no, don't be a lion because I don't want to change you. You always talking about trying to change you. So never mind. Let me ask you this, Mr. Eagle. Would you at least come visit me? <laughs> and I'm thinking, do eagles visit lions? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm like, babe, I don't think so. She's like, so you wouldn't even come check on me? <laughs> I'm like, babe, I would be an eagle. I don't think eagles and lions hang out. She was like, Simba had friends all over the jungle. What do you mean? <laughs> I said, babe, that's a movie. She's like, this real life. And so we in counseling because I wanted to be an eagle. <laughs> I just wanted to be an eagle. Thank you, America. Barry Brewer Jr. <laughs> Howie! You know, Barry, you have the most important ingredient a comedian needs, and that is
Thank you. I think that you, no matter what you set up there, the audience is gonna love you and be drawn to you. I think you took a shot, you know, this was one story, you know, whereas if you had jokes and you were throwing jokes, you could, you, you, it was one, if they weren't gonna go with you, but they went with you, and they went with you because you're likable and you're a good storyteller. Thank you so much. Simon. Um, Barry, look, I, I totally agree with Howie. I think, you know, uh, you're really, really likable. You're very funny. However, I'm going to be honest with you. Your okay. first audition, it was so different uh, behind the keyboards, and I was really hoping that you would do the same thing for the live shows. I think if you had have done, you would have given yourself a much, much better shot. Because, because we've seen, it, I don't know, it, I'd never seen an act like that before, a comedian singing at the same time. And so I'm struggling because of what I just said. I like you, I just didn't, I preferred your first audition. Heidi, do you agree? I That's think- okay, no, don't boo him, thank you, thank you. I like That's the story you and you had me, like I, I was laughing out loud, but I do agree with Simon. I did like the accompanying of the keyboard because uh -huh. it made you stand out from the other comedians. Gotcha. But you're still very, very talented and thank I think you. America should still vote for you, you because you are amazing and funny. We start by revealing the acts which made your top five. Let's do it. Here's the first result. Summer Rios. And Mos. Please, step forward. One of you is still in the competition. One of you is heading home. America has voted. The first act in this week's top five is... Here's the next result. Mzanzi Youth Choir. And Erwan Legayar. Please step forward. One of you is still in the competition. One of you is heading home. America has voted. The second act still in it is... But what we and they want to know is, are they in the top two? We will find out later one more time for Mzanzi Youth Choir. We are on a roll now. Let's keep it going. Here's the next result. Justin Jackson. And Putri Ariani. Please step forward. One of you is in the top five and still in the competition. One of you is leaving. America has voted. The next act still in it is.
Thank you so much. Simon, talk to Putri, please. Talk to her. Uh, look, it's... It, I don't want to jinx anything. However, uh, as it stands right now, I always say this, actually, and it's true. You know, the American audience really, really get this right. And so, fingers crossed. I mean, you know, I, I, it, it was, what you did last night, genuinely, was one of my favorite ever live performances. Thank you so much. Barry Brewer, Jr. Philip Bowen. And Trig Watson. Please step forward. Three acts for one spot. America has voted. The next act still in it is... and Parent Jam. And Warrior Squad. Please step forward. One of you is in the top five. One of you is heading home. America has voted. The last act in the top five and still in the competition is... In no particular order, the first act in the top three is... Mzanzi Youth Choir! The next act in the top three is... through. There's one spot left. Here we go. The third act in this week's top three is... Warrior Squad! The first act going into the finals is... Second act going into the finals is...
both, both acts so deserve to be in the final. However, I'm gutted. I'm gutted for the group who came third. I mean, genuinely, because they couldn't have done any more. However, that shows just how good these two who got through are. And that's what it's all about. mother wants me to lose weight, but she doesn't know how to tell me. She's in New York, she comes to LA. You know how you see your parents, you become a child again? I'm like, oh my God, mommy! She's like, Jacqueline, Lord I mercy, you're fat. <laughs> Jesus, you are fat. What are you eating, people? <laughs> I don't like weight loss TV shows. If you love that show, The Biggest Loser, you and I can't be friends. <laughs> You know how that show works? If somebody's overweight, you lock them on an island, and they have to work out eight hours a day, seven days a week, and oh yeah, we're gonna make you wear a small spandex bra, and baby panties, and wear you on a scale, and for cattle, on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you lose weight? Who's losing these contests? <laughs> you want to impress me, get a bunch of fatties and lock them in a donut shop. <laughs> the first one to not go into a diabetic coma wins. That's the show <laughs> I would support. How did I get into this? How do I make noises? I don't know. I grew up making noises. I can't stop it, man. <laughs> when I was growing up, I lived next to an active runway. My father was in the Air Force. So that meant every few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. My mom wasn't prepared for that. Why is the six month old baby making noises? <laughs> now, later on in life, I learned that these sounds can get you in trouble. I'll give you an example. On an aircraft, this is what I did. Not allowed to do this. <laughs> Don't do that on a plane, man. If you go, they're going to think it's real. I did that. This is Barbara Walters, and today on my show, I have award-winning actress, Natalie Portman. Natalie, I hear you're having a baby. I am Barbara. <laughs> We're thinking of naming the baby Oscar, but that's, that, that's silly because that's my cat's name, so. Hey, y'all, it's Miley Cyrus. What's up? Okay, okay. What, Dad? No, I'm not going to clean my room right now. Want me to clean out your bank account? <laughs> you do jokes, I do impressions. I got it. I could do jokes. I'm sure you could. Could you do an impression? Yes, yes, I could do an impression. Go ahead, do it. What? Do it. Impression. Yeah, and then you tell me who I'm doing. Okay, all right, let me think. King Kardashian. What? 
You are tweeting without thinking. Donald Trump. No. It's cheap. It's cheap. Animals, it's a crapshoot. Crapshoot. <clears throat> Come on! All right, now listen, I have an impression. Okay, I am not a professional. That's fine. All right, t tell me who this is. Ready? Yeah. Who's this? <clears throat> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Elton John. In what world do you live in, Rebecca? Where some 17-year-old dude is showing up to this house party like, y'all not gonna believe this. I got Pinot Grigio. <laughs> yeah, got that Grigio. Let's do shots of Chardonnay. Let's start a book club. <laughs> yeah. It's never happened, right? You don't know a 17-year-old that owns a corkscrew. That's weird, all right? Not one time in your entire life can you tell me a time where you've seen a 17-year-old dude be like, mm, 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 mm. this Merlot pairs so well with the Doritos Locos taco. It's just something about Zinfandels in a Hot Pocket that is to die for. You know, I worked at this grocery store for a lot of hateful years. Why is it when you hate your job, they won't fire you? <laughs> <laughs> and now look, I worked in the worst department at the grocery store, not the meat, not produce, not the freezer. I worked in the steel department. You familiar with the steel department, right? Self-checkout lane? I got paid to watch people steal all day. <laughs> and people think you stupid. Like, you know when they gonna rob you when they bringing up their stuff, they always gotta look back up at you. They're like, boop, boop. <laughs> this one dude tried to humiliate me. Like, I knew he was gonna rob us because I'm looking at him, he's looking at me. I'm like, just steal it. <laughs> but he, try, he tries to play me in front of the entire store while he's ringing his stuff up. He makes the beat noise with his mouth. <laughs> He didn't even do it right. Like, you gotta act this out, go all in, raise your pitch at least. He's like, Bleh. I like the produce is not even supposed to make a sound. You're beeping unbeepable stuff. When I got invited to come in America's Got Talent Champions, it was like all my dreams came true at once. I thought he was gonna be a singer. So I decided to do some research on the judges. Did you know that backstage there are five hairdressers, three makeup artists, a wardrobe department, and a whole team of nutritionists? <laughs> <laughs> and that's just to maintain Simon's new look. Oh! Oh! Yes. Heidi, uh -oh. my mum told me that you're a Victoria. Secret supermodel. <laughs> and she showed me one of your videos. But then Dad came home from work and we watched all your videos. <laughs> over and over again. I got a motorcycle. I don't like telling people I have a motorcycle because every time I tell someone, they always got to tell me a story about how their friends crashed on a motorcycle. You know, like, why do people have to be so negative? I don't go up to pregnant women telling them my dad left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. I walked at my apartment one time, right? I walked at my apartment, and my neighbor walked up to me. She was like, oh my God, you got a motorcycle? Are you stars? Are you stars? You better be careful. I got in a car wreck the other day. My car flipped eight times. I'm looking to be alive. Blissed, right? <laughs> Yeah, she black, by the way. <laughs> Everyone around us was like, you know, that, was, that is crazy that your car flipped eight times, you're alive, you are blessed, you know? And I'm, I'm over here thinking, who the heck counted, right? Like, who's that calm when their car's flipping in the air? Ah! One! Like, who's doing that? My name is Preacher, thank you so much, I appreciate it. That's, That's it. it. Kind of clueless, you know, but it seems to me kids today are a little bit entitled. Am I right? Right? 
Okay. So my daughter turns 16, and she says, Mom, I want to go to Coachella, and I want you to get me a hotel room. Oh. Yeah, I know. I'm like, you're 16. Listen to yourself. A hotel room? <laughs> I mean, if you can't find a guy who can afford a van by now, I mean, really. <laughs> When I grew up, my mom and her friends, they partied 24-7. You know, they always, always brought flasks on field trips. Okay? Right? So, I go on my daughter's first field trip. I take my flask. Right, Howie? Right. I'm not going to get on a bus full of first graders sober. Not, not, not ever. Okay? <laughs> I take on my flask, you know, have a little sip. And all the other field trip moms, they just go ballistic. They're like, she's got a flask, she's got a flask. You know, like I'm some kind of terrorist, right? <laughs> I'm like, calm down, Biatch. <laughs> I'm not driving this bus. I can teach you how to do Ryan Reynolds, but first you have to do Jim Carrey's voice. And in order to do Jim Carrey, just imagine yourself as a giant Canadian bird, okay? <laughs> Hi there, judges. Uh, I have some voices for you. <laughs> Take that Canadian bird down to a sexy whisper, and you have Ryan Reynolds. Hi there. <laughs> I have some voices for you, judges. <laughs> I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> that did sound like Ryan Reynolds. Oh my God. Okay, here's how to do Seth Rogen's voice. Yeah. Take Santa Claus's laugh. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Now imagine Santa Claus eats a different kind of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crazy job. I just lay down chimneys and I deliver packages to kids and eat their cookies. <laughs> now you can do that. I have a twin sister. And I actually don't talk a lot about being a twin because people ask really stupid twin questions. Like, whenever I say I'm an identical twin without fail, someone will go, do you guys look alike? <laughs> we are very different personality-wise, me and my sister. I'm very silly and playful. My sister's very dark and sarcastic. And she has low self-esteem, which is weird, because she has my face. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it's like when someone that looks exactly like you calls you up and goes, I feel so ugly. <laughs> That is our face. <laughs> you know, I'm not from California, but I look like I am. Just another wobbly guy on the sidewalk. <laughs> I made eight bucks walking over here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, can you guys see this bracelet? Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, just making sure, you yeah. know? <laughs> Everybody always thinks that this is one of those copper magnetic healing bracelets. I'm like, hey, does that thing work? I'm like, oh yeah, man. I was in a wheelchair last week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on this arm next week. <laughs> I better take it off soon though, you know? I don't want to get too better. <laughs> Might mess up my show and then I have to figure out how to be a magic singing ventriloquist or whatever. <laughs> Let's just say we're not getting a puppet on that thing. Oh my God. I just got the citizenship. Yeah! Until I got my citizenship, I never had a road rage. If somebody cut me off, I'd be like, oh, so sorry. I was driving too slow. <laughs> but the day I got the citizenship, somebody cut me off. I'm like, what the heck? You can't cut me off. This is my land. <laughs> That's when I realized I become true American. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. He's hilarious because I felt entitled. Oh! Be 
before the citizenship, somebody hold the door for me. I ran really fast. I'm like, thank you so much. After the citizenship, I'm like, uh, you hold the door, you peasant. <laughs> I got sassy. <laughs> It was very hard on me growing up. He used to call me a huge waste. <laughs> you see, both of my parents wanted me to become a lawyer. Never even came close to becoming a lawyer, but I was once involved in a suit. <laughs> but I've since traveled the world. Went to Spain, fell madly in love with a Spanish sundress. <laughs> and we broke up and I was pantalones. I love him. But I'm happily married now. Oh. <laughs> My wife and I are Polly. It's polyester. <laughs> Our daughter Capri. <laughs> brought home a pair of sweatpants. Hey, I want to be a supportive father. But I want to see her date someone ironed with a crease. This guy looked like he'd been donated. She asked if he could spend the night. I said, in my house, you'll sleep in separate drawers. <laughs> you know the problem when you go to a nursing home and you look like me? Yeah, they wouldn't let me out. <laughs> the only reason I'm here tonight is I had to get a night pass from the front desk. <laughs> the first thing I found out when I got old is that young people hate old people. Oh, is that right? Did you ever drive behind an old person? <laughs> yes. Does this look familiar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The worst thing I'm experiencing now at 80 is that my hearing has gotten awful. I'm talking to this woman the other day, and she tells me she has a peanut allergy. Right, I misheard the word. <laughs> I said, what happens? She said, I start choking and gagging. I applied to work at the Coco Foundation when I was in college, uh, and they rejected me because I have hearing loss. But they, <laughs> yes, boo, the Coco Foundation. Uh, they, told, they told me I was a liability issue because if the gorilla were to sneak up on me, I would not be able to hear it, which I can't say with any degree of certainty, uh, <laughs> but probably that seems true. Um, so you guys seem like a nice crowd full of hearing people, so I'm just gonna <laughs> toss this question out to the room. Um, what are y'all gonna do different if a gorilla sneaks up on you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, I would love to know. Uh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. DM me after the show. I'm just desperate to know what home field advantage y'all have uh, <laughs> with your two-second head start. Ridiculous. Nothing. Nothing. The only thing you're going to do different than me is die scared. That's it. Um, Yo, this is a true story. When I was 10 years old, my parents sent me to Tourette's camp. Yeah, that's where the joke should end. <laughs> It's a real place, and I didn't realize it till this moment, but I found out that when other people twitch, it makes me twitch more. <laughs> so on the first day, they put us in a circle with a hundred kids. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> the kid next to me did a shoulder roll, and my Tourette saw that and took that as a challenge. And I threw him a head flop. The girl next to him did a full body twitch and everybody saw that and all hell broke loose. <laughs> Some of my charts, I can't explain why they're true. I just know from experience, this is what's gonna happen. Here's the locker room at my gym. I am the blue dot, I walk in. I start to get changed. The minute I get all my clothes off, 12 guys walk in and this is where their lockers are. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> It defies statistics. Sometimes the statistics sound scary, but it's not when you look at it from a different angle. When I first got married, I heard 44% of marriages end in divorce. That's a scary number. Think about that. 40, my wife and I are like, do we stand a chance? Think of the other side. If 44% of marriages end in divorce, you know what that means? 56% of marriages end in death. <laughs> Let's go, 
death do us part. <laughs> Those are the two ways that marriages end, folks. If, if you're married, enjoy it now. It does not end well. <laughs> Give it up for my dad. Gerald Kelly, the comedian. I love that dude. But he's a loser. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> oh my God. I'm seven years old. And we have the same job. <laughs> The other day, he was like, hey, yo, Hunter, are you going to work tonight? <laughs> if you going, I'm going. We have the same job. <laughs> My roommate's actually white, and he's like, uh, this is racist. Not all white people are serial killers. I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like all serial killers are white here, buddy. You're on season 14. Come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a clean sweep. Let's go. And I feel bad because white people are actually the only people in the world that can be serial killers. There's no other ethnicity in the world that can get away with eight unsolved murders in a row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't think black people want to be serial killers? Of course they do. They cannot. Could you imagine a black serial killer? He would get pulled over on the way to getting supplies. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. Come on. Indians, Asians, Hispanics, we can't be serial killers. Our family's way too nosy. <laughs> My mom's an old Indian lady. She's a snitch. <laughs> My mom will just show up. Where is the rope? What happened to the duct tape? Where is the bleach? I'm calling the cops. I'm like, come on, mom. You raised me. <laughs> Don't do this. I'm your son. Come on. I'm 34. I don't look 34. I, I don't look any age. I just look like I've been through stuff. <laughs> and 34 is a difficult age because it's not old, but it's old enough that the world's changed. Like, I, I'm old enough to remember time was you saw a fella with a neck tattoo. Well, then you thought, oh, I'm about to see a dead body. Now you see a fella with a neck tattoo. All you think is, oh, this latte is going to be amazing. <laughs> and, and, and you got to do things to stay young. I, I do things to stay young. I, I recently borrowed money from my parents. <laughs> For those of you who never borrowed money from your parents, the crew will know this, the celebrities will not. <laughs> you have to gather your parents together and go, hello, mother, father, you know how you're supposed to teach me responsibility? Well, you failed, and that comes with a hefty fine. <laughs> I just got broken up with, it was an open relationship, it means you can be with anybody you want. I didn't know this, apparently, the girl can also do that. <laughs> yeah, no, read the fine print. And my girl got the first person. I made the mistake of asking her this guy's name. She told me, you ever hear somebody's name and then know immediately that this person is a better lover than you? I was like, what's his name? She's like, Alejandro. I'm like, no! No! Alejandro! You, you, you couldn't be with uh, Eugene, you know? Or, or a Simon? You couldn't do a Simon. You couldn't do a Simon. You couldn't do a Simon. <laughs> listen, listen, if you're not laughing right now, if you're not laughing right now, your name is Eugene. <laughs> Every Eugene here is like, actually, I've heard they're pretty vigorous. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So I, I met this guy, and it was a relief because his name was Alejandro, but his voice was Eugene. <laughs> Straight up, he comes over, he's like, hey man, how's it going? I'm like, much better now. <laughs> As soon as my son touched my finger, I knew I would die for him. I don't even know this dude, but I would die for my son. The first time I see him, the first time I touch him, I would die for my son. Isn't that crazy we do that, fellas? Yeah. That's right. Because we wouldn't do that for our wives. What? Oh, I'm feeling the heat from the women. Hey, hang on, hang on. Let me explain. Ladies, hang on. Hang on. Look, ladies, the first time we see you or touch you is usually on the first date. No dude in this world is dying for you on the first date. Now, let me make you feel better about the situation. If you're on a first date and a dude looks at you and goes, I would die for you, you better run. Because that dude's about to kill you. But I would die for my wife now, 100%. It took a couple years, but we got there. That's right. If a car jumped the curb and was headed her way, I would push out of the way and take the hit myself. That's how much I love her. 
because we've all dated people we wouldn't die for, right? That same car jumps the curb. You're like, shh, I guess it was their time. I guess it was their time. The Lord works in mysterious ways. I'm the type of guy, ladies, that will offer you my jacket. If it's cold outside, I will offer you my jacket. Uh, but I'm not the type of guy that uh, once you turn that down, then uh, you get cold later. <laughs> Offers off the table. You, uh, you obviously make bad decisions, and uh, we shouldn't both suffer for that. I just found out that I might need glasses uh, for reading. So I had to make the hard decision, you know, to stop reading. Uh, I got colors and shapes down, I'm pretty good. I got silhouettes made out. I knew I was getting older, by the way, when I started rooting against the kids in scary movies. Friday the 13th, Halloween, teenagers do something stupid or rebellious, but you still want them to make it. You want them to live. You're like, run in the barn, he's coming, run in the barn. <laughs> now I'm like, your mom and dad told you not to leave the house. 